Okay, that fan noise you hear, that means we're putting together some rack tones today. Yes, it is, uh, it's a, this is for my old school big hairy guitar rack homies. Scott Henderson, jazz fusion rock legend. Um, if you don't know Scott Henderson, you, you really should. I became aware of him with Tribal Tech, and then I went back, and I was like, oh, it's your Korea. And, uh, I mean, Scott has done a bunch of different bands over the years and his solo stuff. If you're new to Scott, I suggest start at Tore Down House, the album, or Dog Party. Those are both sort of like his blues albums, still wildly harmonically rich, uh, but it's maybe a little more of a palatable entry. Uh, you know, it's... Scott Henderson is like a fine scotch. Like, if you just handed it to a kid, they'd be like, what is this? Uh, but you have to, you know, give some of yourself and, and really get all of those flavors. So, uh, But those are two entry-level albums that are fantastic. And in fact, they're so good. One of my favorite, favorite tones, uh, regardless of, of genre, is on Tore Down House, on the song Tore Down House. And, and it's... You know, if you might listen to it and go, oh, it's a straight ahead sort of blues jam with awesome extra changes and chords in there and amazing playing and all of that good stuff that you would expect from Scott Henderson. But man, the tone on that is just so warm and fat and bluesy it's, and refined. So that's what we're putting together today, that tone on Tore Down House. Thankfully, Scott has been very cool online and has answered some of the questions regarding the tone on this album. So he said he used a plexi and then this other setup. I don't, I think on this tone in particular, it sounds like this setup that we're trying to build today. And the first component is he was using um, a Strat with Sir pickups, the V60 LP. Those are uh, a low peak. so you know, where the normal Strat uh, peak bite would be, it's like shifted down, which gives a very fat, warm, big sound. Uh, it's uh, my favorite Sir single coil, and it's one of my favorite single coils uh, that anyone makes. They sound awesome. If you want that super sh shiny, shimmery thing, it's not the direction, but if you want a fat tone, especially something that maybe balances with humbuckers in the bridge, Look at those pickups, they're very good. So I don't have a Strat with those, but I do have a Sur with the V60 LPs here in the neck and middle position. And in the bridge is a third power. Right. Um, but this is a neck pickup tone. Now, depending if you believe the internet or if you believe all of the guitar makers that have ever made a guitar, um, this is made of koa, so that's gonna sound different than like an ash strap. Just, we'll talk about that later. Uh, um, so, neck pickup, Sir V60 LP. Nice. Now that is going into the Custom Audio Electronics 3 Plus, uh, was it SE or not SE? I'm not sure, because this one is a three plus, the original. They made it in purple and in white. But uh, it has been modded to mostly SE spec. So I think it's somewhere in between. I don't know. I have uh, side by side AB and a white one and this one. And, you know, just like all the old preamps, they sound similar but a little bit different. So who knows? But we're going to say this is the same. It's, you know, uh, don't know if you know this, John Sir designed this too. He was the amp side of the Custom Audio Electronics uh, preamp and amps. Uh, so, uh, and you'll see, and it, and you'll see, it makes sense that uh, Scott Henderson now plays like Sir amps. I, I'm sure he still has the Custom Audio heads, but you'll see him with a, a Sir head as well. From, from our friendly CAE preamp, we are going out into a Mesa 290 power amp. That is a 6v6 based power amp, it's 100 watts. It has modes, you know, this was famously used also by like Petrucci and you know, all of the paired with Triaxis and uh, 
uh, you know, anyone in the preamp era, because there's two rack spaces as opposed to like four, and really versatile, because it has these modes. It has a deep mode, which does, does an insane, ridiculous bass boost, modern mode, which tightens things up for like some crunch, and then half power, which just sounds bad. So don't use that mode. I'm not using any modes because I have a feeling Scott didn't use any modes on there. So let's take a look at a basic tone. We are really dealing with channel one, and that is the clean. I'm also using a heavy pick Fender-ish style that I'm using not the pointy edge, I'm using the side edge. I've seen Scott mention that before, um, and I think he and Landau also maybe get into some collusion, some tone collusion on things, because they overlap quite a bit. But that side of pick thing, if you like big fat tones, that does does help. So that's the um, the clean tone, because I have the gain pushed. Game. Right at the end of clean. Where I'm bright, I could maybe take the treble down a smidge. If we give a no bright switch, I think we're already too deep into the warmifying. I'm gonna go with the bright switch. Cool, we're there. So from there, Scott mentions using a tube screamer and you know, it's like one of those things. I went around the house like, where did my tube screamer go? How do you lose a tube screamer? It's not like someone's gonna walk in and take it. But I looked everywhere, thankfully. I have many others, like variations on it, but I don't have a, an 808, which he mentions, the, the um, 808 Tube Screamer. But I do have a couple alternatives, and we'll go through those and see kind of um, what sounds closest, shall we? Let's uh, move over to the pedal board cam. In the tone two, I feel like I hear maybe like a dimension D or make it like a subtle modulation, stereo modulation behind it. And then definitely there's some reverb. So I, I don't know when I'll add it, but at some point, if you hear some reverb, I'm using, I'm gonna use plugins for this because I don't wanna commit to it too early. Uh, I think I'll be using the Eventide Tri-Chorus, uh, Tricera uh, plugin and a 480L emulation from Relab, because that kind of sounds like that sound. I used to have the Scott Anderson SE, Boss SE 270, no, Boss SE 70, and a 50. I gave the 50 to a friend, and then I held on to that 70 for years waiting to make this video, and then I sold it six months ago, and I was like, darn it, a little late. So anyway. Going with the Lexicon emulation. Okay. Check out the head on this tune, Tore Down House. You know you're in for some wild stuff when this is the head of the blues tune. So right now it's kind of a, a thin, like just kind of directish kind of tone, right? It needs something. So I know Scott has used the RC booster before. He has a signature RC booster. Let's throw on the RC booster. That's already uh, a little nicer.
still a little thin on the top because I have a, the RC Booster at a setting I really love, which is just like super subtle. It's a niceifier. But let's turn that off and maybe go for the Vemram Janray, which um, have the gain set off. It just doesn't have labels on the knobs, but you can see the gain is all the way off. The volume is, uh, I don't know, what is that, 10 o'clock? And then the bass is the left, treble is the right side. So they're both around like one or two-ish o'clock. But this thing is great at uh, fattenerizing stuff. <laughs> It, it already, like now we're talking, right? So that's a great, I think, basic fundamental tone for the cleaner stuff. It's possible Scott was rolling back his volume knob a bit. Some scratchy pots. Gets real clean. Or just a little bit of dirt. really nice and that tone covers really like the core of the tune everywhere. I love this tone. This is like totally when I'm not doing a, a video with hard rock and stuff. This is kind of where I live on stuff. Really cool. So, then there's a solo in the tune. Hmm. Checking out the pedal board here. There, so there's a couple options. One is to boost further into like the Jan Ray. That's really not a lot. Uh, let's goose that. Scott's signature RC booster has two, it's basically like two in one. To me, it didn't sound the same exactly as just having one, but you know, it's such a good sounding pedal and it is nice to have the always on suite and then a little more extra uh, give there. sound quite like uh, the solo tones on Tore Down House. So let's try something else. Scott is known for using a Maxon SD9, as is Michael Landau. Uh, both of those guys have their own 
custom tweaked version of it now. Uh, I don't have Scott's yet. I have been looking and I'm probably will get that very soon. But here's a standard SD9. Come on. own sometimes it could get a little brash you know it's hard to go from that huge open sort of blues tone just to the SD9 because it has some harsh frequencies on the top let me tweak that a little bit and that's as loud as it gets too so I think that's one of the things that uh, the, the tweaked versions of the pedals have more headroom more control over the uh, tone knob <laughs> hate pedal, uh, pedal relationship with this sometimes I'll turn it on and then literally two minutes later I'll turn it on and be like ah it sounds kind of brash and harsh so uh, that's not the tone I believe in this album getting back to what Scott said online is it's a TS 808 so uh, I've got two kind of 808s lined up one is the uh, King Tone Duelist which is based on an 808 and in sock mode it's kind of an 808 it's a great one, but um, and then the Green Rhino from Way Huge, which is uh, sort of its own sort of take on somewhere between a TS9 and an 808. So let's take a listen to that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
quite nice. All right, let me switch guitars to uh, my my number, my numero uno. So the Sur was tuned down to E flat. This is in standard tuning. This is my Shabbat. Uh, this is two Lawler Imperial humbuckers also, so it's going to be totally different. But Landau uses two Lawler Imperials, so like what? What are you going to say? You tell Michael Landau he doesn't know what pickups to use. Here, we'll start a half step down. Yeah, dig that. Obviously, the humbuckers are bigger, and I could cut a little more like treble. Let's get a little more treble. It's funny, those V60 LPs, maybe it's just the guitar. It seems a little louder. Um, yeah, that's cool. It's just a great combination of tones. Ah, there's one more missing element that I didn't mention is the cabinet one of the biggest tone shaping things. Now this is really cool. Um, I am not running through my mic'd up cabinet. I'm running through Fryat power load as my load box and I'm running an IR. Um, before when I kind of made this tone, I used one of my own IRs, which I think sound really great. Uh, but Scott Henderson with York Audio, it's unsponsored, just this is cool. He has his carry right 412 cab. Carry Wright was sort of like the dumble, if you will, of cab builders. He's passed away, sadly, uh, recently. And um, so he built cabs for Michael Landau and Scott Henderson and uh, like a lot of the cats. And by all accounts, they're the best sounding cabs you can have. So Scott Henderson has this Carry Wright cab and they created IRs of it. And there's a whole section of Scott Henderson. This is his 57 that he put up, a U67 that he put up. Here's his room mics. So really cool. Uh, that's what I've been using this whole time. So the IR is, here's the center IR, the number two. Sounds really nice. Then I'm taking, copying the audio and doing room left and room right, pan them all the way out. And then he has a room mic of a U67, which I'm just tucking in a little bit. And that's the, the tone. It's real cool. I could live on this all day long. And I could play the same blues lick all day long.
Yeah. So before you said, hey, man, you're playing the same blues lick all over the place. So? Yeah, I'll kick my camera. So that's it. I don't know. This is probably like an hour and a half long. Thanks for hanging out watching. Uh, thanks to Scott Henderson for all the awesome music. And, yeah. There you have it. <laughs>